been a very interesting uh, bread baking technique that's been floating around the internet since about 2007. It's called no knead bread. Uh, it uses a very simple dough, a high moisture content, and it's baked in a Dutch oven. I would encourage you to watch the video sometime. It's very worthwhile. Uh, no knead bread, because of its simplicity and its great flavor, is a very innovative technique compared to modern bread baking methods. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, this is not a new idea. In fact, no knead breads have been around for hundreds of years. Today I'm going to show you how to do an 18th century version of no knead bread. We're going to bake it in an 18th century manner. We're going to use that old Dutch oven that so many modern bakers are falling in love with. There are many different kinds of breads in the 18th century. Some of them were baked from a very fine white flour, others made from very coarse flour. Still others were made with wheat flour mixed with other grains. But today we're going to focus on a bread uh, known by the 18th century British and North American colonists as French bread. Now when I say French bread, what one might think is a baguette, a batard, or a brioche. Uh, most people think of a French bread as a, a, a firm white bread with an open crumb structure and a crispy crust. Numerous 18th century English cookbooks contain recipes for French bread, but this French bread is nothing like the modern French bread. Uh, modern breads made with just flour, water, yeast, and some salt. No, these French breads in these 18th century cookbooks are always made with milk and sometimes eggs and butter. This English version of French bread was made into uh, loaves or into rolls. The rolls were sometimes referred to as manchet bread, which can mean the quality of a bread or sometimes its size and shape. This French bread had its crust either rasped away or chipped off with a knife. 18th century French bread was commonly used as an ingredient in other dishes. The bread crust was often used in porridges, soups, even in other breads. Let's make some of this French bread. In a large bowl, let's put three cups of flour, bread flour or all-purpose flour will do, and about one and a half teaspoons of salt. That's it for the dry ingredients. Let's do the wet ingredients. The original recipe calls for barm. And since nobody has barm, which is the foam from the top of beer, instead we're gonna make a substitute barm. Let's start with a half a cup of water. To that, I'm gonna add a heaping tablespoon of flour. And then we need some yeast. We're gonna use instant yeast. You need a, about a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon. And then we can stir this all together. Now for the rest of the wet ingredients. I'm gonna take just one egg white. Let me crack this egg. And we're gonna add that to three quarters of a cup of milk and whisk that together. Now I've got here two tablespoons of uh, melted butter and I'm going to uh, put that in with two egg yolks and we're going to whisk those together. Now let's add this all together. And we can put in our barm mixture too. And that's it for our wet ingredients. Now I'll mix the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients and I will mix them with these. As soon as the dough is formed and all the flour is absorbed, it's time to stop mixing. Now one of the interesting things about the 18th century recipes is they call for this dough not to be kneaded. It makes a very wet and sticky dough. They call it in the recipe a very light paste. We'll cover this with a damp cloth and set it aside 12 to 24 hours. We could divide this dough up and put it into smaller, uh, well-floured bowls to make rolls. Now we've prepared this batch ahead of time and it's been rising about 18 hours. It's got a very nice spongy texture. So it looks like it's time to start preheating our Dutch oven. We're going to be baking our bread in a Dutch oven today. Baking bread in Dutch ovens is very common in the 18th century, although our recipes don't call for that specifically. We had this oven over the fire and it's warmed up. Don't skimp on preheating this. You want it to be nice and hot when you get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sprinkle some cornmeal into the bottom of that. This will keep the loaf from sticking. You know, just a very thin layer here. That looks good. And it should 
brown up just a hair so you can see that the uh, oven is getting the right temperature. Now it's time to look at our dough. Now I'm going to turn this out onto a, a liberally floured surface. Now your dough may be a lot stickier than this, but that's okay. It, it'll help to flour your hands so that it doesn't stick. Now let's pat this down a little bit. Let's fold it once. Let's fold it twice. Three times and one last time. Four times we're going to fold this. Now let's put it in our Dutch oven. You want to keep a close eye on this while it's cooking. It's going to take 25 to 30 minutes. You want it to be a nice deep golden brown without burning on the bottom. If you're going to bake this in your home oven, you're going to want to set your oven to 450 degrees. There, that looks perfect. I'm going to take it off. And there it is, an 18th century enriched, no-knead bread, something that they called in the time period French bread. We want to make sure that our bread is completely cooled before we rasp or chip off the outer crust. Uh, the, the crust and also this, uh, the French bread as it is, is used in many 18th century recipes. I invite you to subscribe to our new blog, SavoringThePast.net. On there you'll find recipes and discoveries about 18th century cooking. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get a notification of all the new videos as soon as they come out. And of course, follow us on Facebook so you can find out all the great news from James Townsend and Son. James Townsend and Son carries hundreds of quality 18th and 19th century reproduction clothing items and personal accessories, including a great line of cooking vessels and utensils. All these can be found on our website or in our print catalog. Thanks for watching, and I invite you to come along and join us as we savor the aromas and flavors of the 18th century.